All right, good morning, you guys. It is early. It is like six, almost seven o'clock in the morning. We decided to do a boat trip out to this little secret place that I've never been before and that I'm super excited for and, uh, and it's beautiful out right now. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike Sasser, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles, California. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome. It's nice to meet you. If you're back for some more photography knowledge, some entertainment, then I missed you so much and I hope you guys stick around. So Hawaii has this little bit of kind of like a secret island. I don't think you can really call it that, but uh, I've been wanting to shoot there since I heard about it. And finally, we were able to put that together and I'm excited to bring you guys along with me. Definitely stick around because at the end of this video, I'm gonna be going through my editing process so that you can see how I went from this to this. Oh my God, look at that sunset. Whoa! Sunrise. <laughs> it's early. Okay, I'm allowed to make some mistakes. Today we basically just planned on uh, getting a couple people together. Last day in Hawaii and wanted to try some stuff. Balance on the camera, it's his birthday. Uh, we got some awesome models here to help us out and play around with and, uh, and shoot at sunrise. So let's do it. Now this isn't really a boudoir shoot by any means. These were a couple of models that either I've worked with before or I've reached out to. Quick side note, if you guys wanna learn how I find my models when I'm traveling, I've got a whole course on it, uh, how to find models. I think is what it's called. I'm creative with a camera, okay? Yeah, I, I never nice. liked shooting this because it was just like hanging. Yeah, hanging. It was just hanging, you know? <laughs> this is gonna be, is that enough off the water? Do you think that's safe? Uh, Maybe I'll. Oh. You're tall. You're tall. Maybe so I'll tighten like, it up yeah. a little bit. Yeah, get in the water. Yeah, the water. Oh. All right. Oh, cold. <laughs> All right. I know it's gonna be a little chilly, but I also think it's gonna be worth it um, oh, yeah. to get a little bit more water on that outfit. <laughs> okay. We got it. Okay, I'm All right, good. so I'm gonna do a couple shooting this way and then we'll switch it up and we'll use the light kind of hitting your skin a little bit more. All right, so sometimes when I'm shooting, the person is the most important part, the lighting is the most important part. In these first couple of pictures, since the sunrise was so insane, uh, I made the clouds the most important part, the light of the sunrise the most important part. In this particular way, she's not getting any direct light on her face and on her body the way we're seeing it. So it's gonna be a nice, soft, even light. It's not gonna be very dramatic for her, but it should be dramatic for the whole shot. Now this next set of shots, what I was really focusing on more is the way the light was hitting her skin. So I walked all the way around to the other side to where the sun was behind me. This is going to light her up really beautifully and then the background should go a lot darker because relatively now she's getting hit with the sun. This way. And then, um, can we have like the straps down and look more towards me? Right there. And then take your head to drop it in more like this. Yeah, right there. It's even better. So the sunrise just kept getting more and more ridiculous. So we went back to focusing mostly on the clouds. I find that in photography, you kind of have to pick and choose, you know, what the most important part of the photo is. Is it the details in her eyes? Wow. Is it going to be the background? Is it going to be the light? Is it going to be the scene? Is it going to be the outfit? You're gonna to have to compromise on, on some things usually. Uh, you can't have every single thing in, in every single picture. So you just have to choose what's most important to you. This is pretty ridiculous. I've never seen anything like this before, but the sun is like so beautiful. We're still getting a little color in the clouds. Uh, we're just changing outfits right now to see what, uh, what else we can get. I don't know, this is ridiculous. <laughs> So let's talk outfits. Now, I personally don't really like shooting swim. You know, if I'm outside and there's water, I think it's a little cliche, I think it's boring, I think it's basic. So I don't like shooting a whole lot of swim, so we try and get a little creative with the outfits outside of that. So her first outfit was a chemise, chemise? I had to type into Google how to pronounce that. A slip, it's a slip. It's like a bedtime slip, which I do not like shooting with in the studio because it takes off all of the shape of the person. It's just like one outfit that just goes straight down and doesn't show any of the curves. However, in the water, you can get that wet and it'll kind of stick to the body and therefore show off a little bit more of that shape. So that was cool for the first outfit, but this next outfit I really loved. It was like a white, sheer, woven sort of character and I like this for a few things. The first is all the little details on it, having a little texture 
was amazing. The second part of it that I love is that it's white and white really glows, especially when the sun is coming from behind it. It will light up, it'll give it this beautiful glow and it'll change the shape of a body depending on how the light is hitting, which you can see here in this photograph how the sun kind of cheats on where it says her waist is, even though it's pretty clear to see it's not actually where the line of her waist is. And the last thing I really love about outfits like this is it's suggestive. It's like a little bit see-through, but not too much. So it's sexy without showing too much. It's kind of, it's the best of both worlds. switch and get um, I'm gonna grab the other lens real quick all right so now it's time to switch lenses I had been using the 40 millimeter on these first couple of pictures which I pretty much only use if I'm trying to show the whole scene it's really the equivalent uh, so that's 40 millimeter on the GFX which is the equivalent of about a 33 millimeter on a full-frame camera so now we're gonna toss on the 65 millimeter uh, which on a Fuji GFX, one of those medium format sensors, that's going to look more like a 50 millimeter, your standard 50 prime. The goal now is not to show so much of the scenery, but just to have pictures with impact. It's gonna add a little compression. It should make the clouds look bigger. It should make the mountains look bigger. And eyes at me. All right, so I don't normally shoot uh, like sparkly sequin dresses as I'm sure you guys have seen from a lot of my work, but she brought the outfit in this new me as an artist or whatever you wanna call it. I'm just trying more things. The first thing you're gonna wanna do no matter if you're out in the jungle or out on a secret island or in your studio is to clean up your backgrounds. In this scenario, gotta get rid of the coffee cup, gotta get rid of some of the bags to clean up that space so it just doesn't look as messy. Yeah, All right, turn into the boat a little bit more. <laughs> and then do it uh, like still pretty is, tall. That rope over there doesn't look ugly yeah. like No, no, no. I just stacked it. No, it looks like uh, it looks like it's on a rope. Okay. The next thing I've been playing around with is trying to do like add some depth to the photos by playing around with like things, different distances to the cameras. So one of the things that I asked her to do was to reach her arm out a little bit closer to the camera. That will blur her fingertips a little bit and give you a little bit of a leading line coming back to her. Just a little bit of depth or like implied connection, anything like that. This is like the prettiest place I've ever been. So we were literally the only ones out there, which was absolutely amazing, but it meant that uh, it gave us some freedom to do some more risque pictures. Most of the pictures we did like artistic nudes or some things that were a lot more risque. YouTube is not a fan of stuff like this, so I'm not gonna be able to share that with you guys here. I'll be sharing some more of the pictures from the photo shoot over on my Instagram page, place where I have a little bit more freedom on, on what I can share. So again, if you wanna know how I find models when I travel, check out my course on that. If you're thinking about turning your hobby as a photographer into you know, even like a profitable photography career. I've got a step-by-step -step course on that for starting your boudoir business. But before we end, I wanna give you guys a few tips on how I edited these pictures and really brought them to life. So here's the before picture, here is the after picture. So let's go ahead and figure out how we got from here to here. The first thing I always try and do when editing an image is to just grab a preset, something that I like to start as a good base. So we're gonna go over here. I've got a handful of them over here. This one brightens up everything quite a bit, but we're gonna bring the highlights down a little bit. So we're gonna stick with skin and just bring our highlights all the way down. I also want the entire picture to be up a little bit more, so we're gonna brighten everything a little up, and then we're gonna bring this down with a little localized adjustments. Now this is gonna be really the hero of editing a picture like this. So what we're trying to do here is darken the sky, but brighten her. So to darken the sky, we're gonna tap M, 
and drag a gradient down. Now this is the gradient filter here. We are going to go ahead and take this exposure and bring it down a little bit more and probably boost the saturation a little bit more. Don't tell anybody. Okay, now with her face, we're gonna do Shift M at plus 0.3 and invert. Now we're just gonna brighten up her face a little bit. We're gonna do a couple different ones because we want some different parts of the photo to be to be brighter, there we go. Now she's starting to come alive a little bit. We'll do one more just like this. Now let's take a look here between the differences. Just those few, few really little differences are making such a huge difference. Okay, now the next thing. Let's do some localized adjustments here on, uh, on the water. So the thing about water, outside of the skin, different things can take a lot of adjustments. What I mean by that is if we do select just the water over on this side, we can push the contrast up a ton. Look at that, and it looks natural, it looks real. It doesn't look like you've you know, messed with it at all. Because there's no skin tones in there, you have a lot more freedom. So, let's go ahead and take this guy and we're gonna add the contrast. We're gonna boost the saturation a little bit and get a little bit more character in there. Let's do the same thing over here. So we're gonna come on over here, we're gonna boost the contrast, but because this is darker than 50%, a majority of the water is darker, everything's going to get darker when you when you boost the contrast. So we have to bring up the exposure a little bit to match it, and then we're just gonna warm up the tones over here a little bit, just like that. See, see what we can get away with. All right, let's take a look at our before and after now. That's pretty crazy with just a couple of uh, just a couple of minutes. So one last time, head over to boudoircourses.com for presets, courses on finding models, courses on starting your boudoir business, and I will see you in the next video.